Here's your latest African news. South Africa. Africa's top university to bar unvaccinated from campus. The University of Cape Town will require all staff and students to be vaccinated against COVID-19 from January, its council said Wednesday. Details of the plans are expected in December, making Africa's top-ranking university the first in the country to require proof of vaccination in order to access the campus. South Africa launched electronic vaccination certificates this month and is debating whether to make inoculation mandatory for certain events. South Africa aims to vaccinate 40 million people by February and is about a quarter of the way toward that goal. South Sudan South Sudan was hit by the worst floods in decades. The United Nations says more than 700,000 people have been displaced by the worst floods to hit South Sudan in decades. At least 40 people have died across the country as heavy rains and flash floods destroyed livestock, farmlands, and homes. Some of those who have fled have been displaced numerous times over due to conflict and three years of consecutive flooding. UNHCR said it has teamed up with a humanitarian country team and South Sudan's government to deliver urgently needed support to the most affected, including hygiene items, food, emergency shelter, and solar lanterns to provide light. It said rains are expected to continue for the remainder of the year, with an anticipated increase in the number of people needing humanitarian assistance. Scientists have blamed climate change for the flooding in South Sudan and other countries in Eastern Africa. Sudan Rival Sudan protesters take to the streets of Khartoum There is a heavy security presence in the Sudanese capital Khartoum as rival political factions mount protests. Hundreds of supporters of Sudanese transitional government have taken to the streets while pro-military activists maintain a sit-in outside the presidential palace that started on Saturday. Troops and police have sealed off roads leading to the army headquarters. Leaders from both sides have called on their supporters to keep apart and maintain calm. Sudan's attempt to transition to civilian rule since the overthrow of Omar al-Bashir in 2019 has faced political, ethnic, and economic pressure. Africa-wide Six African states invest heavily in spying, reported. Six African countries are investing heavily in the latest surveillance technology to spy on activists, business competitors, journalists, and other governments, a new report said. The Institute of Development Studies, which published the report, identified Nigeria as the biggest spender with more than $127 million or £92 million invested in surveillance-related activities and equipment in 2017. Egypt, Kenya, Senegal, South Africa, and Sudan have also made significant investments on surveillance technology, the report said. Internet signal interception, citizen surveillance, and internet eavesdropping often Often happen despite laws granting the right to privacy of communication and correspondence, it added. Privacy rights in Africa are very well guaranteed in most countries. However, using this surveillance technology, governments are violating those rights. National security and economic interests are cited as the most frequent justification used by the governments to stretch their surveillance power, often in breach of the rights to privacy of private citizens and civil society organizations. Egypt is named as one of the countries with the weakest privacy protection laws. Without an independent oversight body, the state is the only judge, jury, and regulator, says the report. Eswatini Eswatini orders Facebook closure to curb protest. The Eswatini government has directed the country's main telecoms operator, MTN, to shut down social media giant Facebook, report says. The move is part of a bid to curb pro-democracy protests that have been going on for months in the country, ruled by an absolute monarchy. Privately owned Swaziland News website reported on the government accusing social media platforms of irresponsibly spreading misinformation, which was contributing to the violent attacks and events around the country. The latest development comes as protests continued on the streets of the capital, Mbamba, Bane on Thursday. Since last June, Eswatini has experienced a wave of protests by demonstrators calling for major constitutional reform that would allow them to elect their own leaders. Diaspora Barbados elects its first ever president, replacing the British monarchy. Barbados has elected its first ever president to replace the United Kingdom's Queen Elizabeth as head of state in a decisive step towards shedding the Caribbean island's colonial past. 
Sandra Mason was elected on Wednesday by a two-thirds vote of a joint session of the country's House of Assembly and Senate, a milestone the government said as a statement on its road to a republic. A former British colony that gained independence in 1966, the nation of just less than 300,000 had long maintained its ties with the British monarchy, but calls for full sovereignty and homegrown leadership have risen in recent years. Mason, 72, will be sworn in on November 30th, the country's 55th anniversary of independence from the UK a former jurist who has been the governor general of the island since 2018. She was also the first woman to serve on the Barbados Court of Appeals. Thanks for watching. Visit our YouTube channel Tunacheki to watch our daily news reports and our website tunacheki.tv for all the latest news updates. Also, don't forget to catch our new show Startup Africa every Thursday on our channel. You can directly support this new series by becoming our YouTube member or becoming a Patreon. And remember, Africa is watching.